Today's beat is starting off with Damn Skippy. Found on my SoundCloud. Tecaso made that. Um, before we get started, I do want to announce if you follow me on any of my social media, I've been posting about it. But I have a single. Over time, it is releasing on December 29th. And I would love if you listen to it. Um, I put in a lot of work into the beat, and then you know the 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 overtones of what I put on it. Um, it's my take on. You know, I'm from Houston, so you know, since I was a little child, growing up in the city, it's like you know, there's a there's a certain sound, and like I've been in. Um, many like smoke sessions or just like car sessions with niggas in cars and you know or not just in cars but you know just in smoke sessions where it's turned into like a freestyle session and so you know I've never been a person to freestyle but you know I feel like 2020 has given me superpowers if we gonna talk about superpowers freestyling is one of mine and so you know I freestyled on the beat a little bit so yeah i hope you listen to it but i love the beat like i did some work on that so um yeah december 29th it's releasing over time go get it on all platforms december 29th okay look up take hot style all right so you know tea with take hot style let's get it so i hope that you have brought your weed you know, maybe if you're not, it's fine. But, oh my God. Okay, I'm going to take that. But, um, I hope that you are enjoying your day. We're going to chill back and smoke a little. And then also, I guess just talk about the year. I mean, not like in depth, because it's been a lot, but not really not the whole year we're not going to talk about the whole year because it's so much so much but as i have like as i have gone on throughout this year it's just been like it's a lot like it's been a lot it's been a lot that has gone on and to go from where i started last year like this time last year and to look at where I am now, I'm just like, I am, I was about to say mortified. I'm not mortified, but I'm like, I'm just amazed. That's it. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Because it's like, wow. I don't know. I'm just amazed every single day. It's, it's like, God, you really did that. Thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's all I be saying for real. Because it's like, wow. Okay. Because last year, I guess I'll get as candid as possible about this. But last year, um, 2019 was a lot. I'm not going to go into the whole year. But uh, this time last year, I was living with, I was living with roommates, but living in a house that was owned by this man it sounds crazy it's gonna sound crazy okay but um it was it was owned by this man 
and he's like ex-military but still works for the government and then this other roommate was a man that also works for the government so i'm living with two they both black but they two older black men and i'm the only you know young black woman in the house and so it was cool for a lot of a little while this was after like i needed a place to stay i needed a place to stay y'all like because if you followed me on Instagram um, earlier, maybe like a few months ago or earlier this year, I talked about, um, you know, just some things that I've been through or whatever. And I, I put out like, like before I was living there, I had to live in a rare roof inn for 10 days in Maryland because my aunt had... Um, you know, decided that she didn't want me to live with her anymore when I was living in DC. Oh my God. I don't know what just fell. It was rushing some water. Okay. Um, I'll fix that. At least the, the thing that didn't drop and break the glass because I got time for that okay but I was yeah I was living with her and then because this is after I lived I was living in Colorado and then I left from Colorado and moved in with her in Maryland and after like six months you know like I guess in her mind she was like you know six months but she never ever told me this she never told me like you have six months you know, once you move in, you have six months to get out. She never told me that. Like I asked, I feel like I asked whenever I first moved in, I was like, you know, like, do you have any rules? Like, you know, like what, what, what do I have to live by while living under your roof? You know, like I asked these questions and she didn't have nothing. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. So, you know, I'm there chilling, not chilling, but I worked, I worked a lot. So I wasn't really there. So, and I traveled, I worked and traveled, honestly, truly. And so it was like, when I was there, I was there, but it, I mostly was there to sleep and like wash my clothes, you know, eat. But I wasn't really like there. Like I would talk to her, I would chill with her for a little bit. But like, I don't know. It was one day I ordered some food. She got mad that I ordered food. I guess I didn't ask her if she wanted food. And so from there, she held that grudge against me. And then like months later, a couple months later, I asked her about it and I was like, hey, like, what's up? And then like all this big, big stuff started to happen. And then like, I got back from my, no, I was about to go on my birthday trip to my, visit my sister in Atlanta. And she, um, she told me, I had just got back from another a work trip too to Boston and as soon as like as soon as I got in the door with my my um suitcase and everything she was like um we need to talk and I was like okay what's up and I mean I was tired but I was like okay and I felt I knew I knew it was something I knew it and then she was like I need you to um or like August August 3rd or August 5th something like that I need you to be out and I was like, okay, all right. I'm not even gonna ask no questions cause like the, all the stuff that was transpiring before that, especially like you got mad because I ordered food. Okay, so that whole thing, it was just like, mm, okay, that's fine. Like at this point, like I had been trying to look, like I was already looking for places. I was, I was on the hunt. I had been like, when I was off, like I would, um, and I wasn't off cause I had, I didn't, wasn't off a lot. Cause I had, I was working a full time job and a part time job. So I was working, okay. And um, in the time that I, uh, you know, dang, I lost my track. Okay. In the time that I was off, it was like, I would go visit places, but like in DC or just like, well in DC, Everything is expensive as shit. And so it's like, okay, hold on. Okay. But 
but in DC everything is like expensive as shit so it's like you can't even like afford anything so everything everybody every apartment the whole city has like a um, like a housing 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 help I can't think of the name right now but like if anybody is interested in like living in DC you should know that either you're gonna need a lot of money and you're gonna have money you're gonna be rich okay or you're going to be on some type of you're gonna have to apply for some type of certain program either a program that's going to give you access to like apartments across the whole city and so you get like into a lottery system or something like that and then if you get picked you just pay whatever you have done all the paperwork you've done all the process you have to you got to go through classes and all that stuff but if you've done all that then you know you're good or like how I was doing it I was going through this through certain apartments that are only for like low income but they like really nice like they've like everything is kind of like gentrified down there up there so it's like you know it's nice as apartments newly newly nice as apartments done and like this particular one that I was looking at it was real nice but I made too much money because I was full-time and part-time so you know I didn't qualify so you know I was trying I was trying okay I was trying and even though I was trying she didn't care and so August 5th August 3rd I think I left like a day or two early because I had I was like okay because I had money I mean I had like you know some money saved up and so I was like okay 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 because I was trying to find an apartment so you know I was saving up money for that so it was like okay well if I don't do this then I'll have money for an, a hotel and so I booked a hotel like the night that she told me that I booked the Red Roof Inn and I was like okay 10 days I'll do it it's fine and I did that shit and then within 10 days um like I was telling my daddy about what was going on and stuff and he was calling around and this woman that he put me in contact with she was able to help me find his listing for the man and his house and you know so I was like okay good I don't have to 10 days I only gotta be in here 10 days and so I did 10 days because I wasn't gonna leave early because I already paid and I wasn't gonna get you they wasn't gonna give me my money back so I waited out the 10 days I waited out a whole 10 days in Red Roof Inn I mean no no offense to anybody who has to do Red Roof Inn living but you know I've been there and done that and so you know I understand that's all I'm saying okay but I did that I lived there I lived with that man in February finally I was out I was so ready I was so ready to go because him and that it was oh, girl one day I was about to call y'all yeah, girl but one day I'm gonna have to tell maybe tell y'all about like just the whole living experience with this man these men period because it was like so much but um I was out in February my friend Kim she was able to help me move into this house in DC because his house was in Virginia so not only was I living in Virginia but with this man in this house with this other man too it was also far from like where I worked so my store or where I worked um, in DC was in DC and I lived in Virginia in the DMV like that's a difference and so yeah so having to do that alone was like every day like my trek I did a trek to work every day every day for like I lived there for like six months six months five six months trekking just trekking spending money on tra transportation either with uber or uber and like um the train out there taking a train and walking just so much so much so much so it's like i was happy to be living in dc i was thankful for my friend kim and being able to like you know move into there so i was living in that house in this new house and that was cool um and so i'm living there working and then you know i come to the realization i need to be back because i came to visit houston in may and i came to the full realization 
even during COVID, I need to be in Houston because in February or before I lived, moved out of that man house, I um, applied to this job that I was working full time before when I first moved out there. Um, and um, they had wanted me back and I was on be back again in the summer, this summer, 2020 summer, um, working in Houston and Chicago. And I was excited, but then, you know, COVID. And so couldn't do that anymore. And so I was like, okay, I'm stuck. I'm stuck up here. I was so ready to like, that was gonna be my way to Houston. Yeah, that was gonna be my way to Houston. And then once I get back to Houston, I would have, you know, been working had a job set up set up a job or went back to my job that I was that I currently work at now something like that um and so because you know it's like flexible or because it's like everywhere I could just like apply here either way I got here and so I'm here now, I'm here in Houston, but I've moved in this year alone three times, three times. Yeah, from his house to the house in DC, from DC to here. So yeah, one, two, three, three times. That's my third time, I'm not, well, obviously haven't moved again. But three times this year I have moved. It's been a lot, so you know, um, and in that time frame, I mean, my job has changed as far as like locations, things, certain things that I'm going through have not, I'm still figuring that out. I hope that I feel like some things are working or something's going to happen and you know, some gonna happen. Okay. But either way, I'm working on continuing things and starting things like this, you know, talking to y'all, um, continuing my business, okay? Hey, take out so bad, dad. Stay curious, beast.com, y'all. Um, you know, oh my God, my music. I didn't even realize. I was trying to get this video to just be like 10 minutes. And I also said, I'm gonna edit some of this, but I like, I feel like, you know, like a, a more candid, candid type of life, like behind the scenes, like what everything is going on, you know, like I feel like that's cool. Cause it's like, I'm just here chilling, okay? And you know, like real life goes on. And so, especially like this year, 2020, I feel like, honestly, I'm probably not, I'm probably, not really going to edit any of the videos and i know that you know at the beginning i had to get up and go check whatever fuck was happening outside and i don't know what else happened but you know i know i'm talking like this but it's like you know i'm talking because i feel like this should happen like you know like you could know what's going on behind the scenes because it's like why not i feel like you know if you here and you watching this episode and you've also maybe watched the first few episodes, <laughs> you fucking with me, all right? And so it's like, thank you. But my real um, message, and I know I've been like talking, but I mean, I guess my thing is like leading up to like here and now I am at a place where I know that I am unbothered, okay? And so, one thing that my therapist, because I have always said, this has been a long thing, a long time that I have said, I don't care. And he pointed out that in saying that I don't care, like he understands exactly what I mean when I say I'm unbothered, you know, I have no feelings towards it. I, don't present any emotions to whatever 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 it is that i'm unbothered by that's the exact same thing as me saying i don't care except it's like 
No. I'm unbothered by it because if I'm not caring about it, then it's like care is still an emotion. And care means that I'm putting some something towards it. Mm -mm. If I'm unbothered, that means I am chilling, okay? That means whatever, whatever it is, whether good, bad, happy, sad, I am unbothered by it. It does not move me, okay? And so that's what, you know, like, that's just like, all of that has came to by me being unbothered and even though I've been through these situations, you know, like living in a fucking red roof and was, I don't think it was easy. It wasn't hard. It was not hard. I've been in worse situations, but I was by myself and I think that that was a different situation and that's where I know that because I literally had no, nowhere to go. Like if I thought that I could have went somewhere no like I had nowhere else to go like that was the only place that I could have put myself and all my things and you know so and the only way that I could get there was the rental car that I had to you know purchase or not purchase but you know pay for it so it's like if I didn't have myself and if God was not with me I would not have gotten through that situation and so it's like I'm unbothered because I don't need to be bothered because I've been through worse. I've been through, I've been through, you know? And so if I've been through things and I can go through those things by myself, knowing that it's just me and God, that's it. That's it. Like, you know, sitting, you know, I can call people. I can talk to people, but they're not in my situation. And so, you know, dealing with things like that, um, you know, just having to really look at things. And even though, no, I did not, I did not necessarily put myself in that situation. I just didn't have any other, you know, resource, I guess, at that time. But but i mean like look at it like i had money i was able to pay for things like i still was able to order me food i went and got my nails done you know like i made sure that even though i was in that situation i was still mentally good like i wasn't feeling like i was just down and now i was like something gonna happen the whole year whenever 2019 ended and i was um, you know, living in that damn house with that man. Like, I was like, 2020 going to be different. Like, I know, like, I'm not going to be living here. Like, I know I had to move out of his house soon, but I'm not going to be living here. And it's not going to look like this. And I'm also not going to be in this vicinity at all. Like, I'm going to be in Houston and I'm going to be in somewhere else besides here. And, you know, it happened. And so... You know, I, I'm i not going to say, like, being unbothered got me there, but, like, just being unbothered by certain situations, making sure that, like, I'm looking out for myself. That's what I have learned to do this year. Look out for myself because I always look out for others. And so, you know, like, looking out for myself, and making sure that myself was good that has helped me to you know just be able to do the things and not be be there for people but not enable and not allow people to just take 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 that has that has been that has been what I have learned this year and so I hope that um I know this was a different type of episode I guess but um you know I hope that this whole year has really helped you to reflect reflect hard just you know on life 
and just how you have been in life because I have definitely did that like I've literally thought about like not everything but like a lot of my life like just the whole life like good bad ugly like I have looked at so much and so many things have just came back that it's like it's forced me to like you know look through it because it's like I think once you can get through like big shit like you know um I don't know if I've said on here but my mom passed when I was 18 going on 19 and so um that's like a big thing that I have been working on and I think for a long time like that was the biggest thing that I had to work through and I until like 2017 that was the first time I went to therapy for the first time like officially officially and the first very first session that was the first time I had talked about my mama you know like almost ever like since around the time that she passed with yeah and like just like releasing like everything and like being able to like really 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 talk about just everything the whole thing okay this is too much i don't know what's going on outside but um the wind uh it's a little forceful out here um the music um yeah and so I think that, um, I think that being able, like, that was the biggest thing that I really, really, really had to get through. And so once I started to explore that, that, and bit, like, was able to, like, push past that, like, push past the hurt and the pain and, like, all of that once I started to do that and like confront it and look at it instead of like I was just out here like a snake nah I'm not a snake don't be okay don't get twisted I'm not a snake but like you know like curving I was curving my own self for a long time basically um you know trying to avoid 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 pain and that hurt me and I was not seeing how that was hurting me. And so keeping, just keeping that hurt and pain and just, ugh, it was just so much. It's so much. I mean, like, you know, I already have to deal with the fact that, you know, that relationship is no longer here. You know, like, I, I will never get to see on the, in this life um, my mama again, you know? Like, that's something that, you know, that's a fact. And so that fact, is what I did, what I was curving, you know, hard, very hard. And so, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to act like I'm just like, I don't get sad. I get sad about it all the time. You know, it's very sad. But, you know, I mean, I've been able to understand that fact now. And this year was able, was another like uh the past three years but this year for sure has been a like a glorifying year as far as like i know i have a few months ago a couple months ago i like i don't know it was like just a realization just that fact that fact of like you know she is no longer here. And even though it took a long time, it took a long time. It took a long time. It did. It took a long time. And I held that trauma for a long time. The actual trauma of it for a long time. And so just being able to really like look at myself and say, we know exactly what's going on now. Let's like really believe it so we can move past it and so no longer curving we like going through it and so you know if the emotion is there 
um, I express it. I mean, you know, right now I'm talking about it and this could, you know, get out <laughs> to however many people. Um, so, you know, um, and I mean that in saying just with like my mom being gone and me experiencing that, you know, like I know, like that's hard. And so like 2020, you know, has brought a lot of hurt and pain. Like I was just in here crying like yesterday, like just like watching the news because it's so sad. Cause it's like some, especially now, like the news is starting to show, you know, like the real shit, real shit, real shit. I mean, it should, they should because the shit is really going on. Like niggas is really out here dying from COVID and a whole bunch of other things but people was like just dying like left and right and it's just so fast and it's moving so fast and it's like people are not prepared and it's so painful it's so painful it's so painful because I feel it and so I'm just in here crying because it's like oh my gosh like people are out here hurting like I feel the pain I'm a very sensitive type of person. So I feel pain. I feel it. If you're like in pain, I can feel that. I don't know. Like if you cry, I'm a cry type thing. I don't know. So, um, okay, this is getting a little long. Um, but I really hope that this has helped. <sighs> you know, I hope that you can find a way to be unbothered um, through the rest of 2020, going into 2021, find your level of unbothered where you find things, you try to, me being unbothered is like me saying like, I'm trying to maintain my peace. And so I hope that you can find your level of peace, whatever that is to you, because we all have our different levels of peace. Um, and the things that I want to remain unbothered by, you know, the things that could bother me, I allow. I allow those things to bother me because it's like, okay, okay. Or it's either something that maybe I just have not worked on yet or don't even know to work on yet, you know? I don't know everything. So, you know, there's so, and there's still a lot of things that you know I have to work on. I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not, I'm not there. Not even, not even. Because if somebody come at me wrong, oh, it'd be so hard for me to, I've, I don't, um, I've become, I've become more expressive over the years and more outspoken, but, I still don't like to get to a level where I have to go off on people because it's like, that's a lot. Like, that's a lot of work. That's a lot. It's just a lot. It's so much. So I prefer not to go off on people and get me to that level because then it's a whole different level and you don't want to see that, Taylor. That Tecaso. Like, that might be a Tecaso, like, I don't know. I don't know. But no, people don't like people be like, dang, like some people who have seen me in that element, they be like, I didn't even know that I could get like that. And it's like, yes. Yes. But it takes a lot for me to get there. It does. It really does. But that's why it's like remain unbothered. Unbothered. Okay. <sighs> I'm gonna find a, um, a beat real quick. I know this episode was a little bit longer, you know, but I feel like, you know, people need to know the real. And going into 2021, we gotta be real with each other because if we're not real with each other, then who gonna be real? Nobody real out here. I mean, people, people be saying that they real and they not. And so I feel like, if I can be as real as possible to people, then sure, I'll do it, okay? And so, I wanna be as real as possible with y'all out, out here, on here. 
um you know i done been through some shit. we all have though you know i don't know i haven't been through everything but i've been through a decent amount um so you know i can give people information based on my experiences because i've been through the things and you know so if you have questions i hope you have questions send me questions on my um you can tweet me you can follow me on instagram um everything tech Caso made that um go to my website staycuriousbeats.com listen to my music tech Caso. um tell me what you think like for real um i want to be out here like you know I don't know I really don't know I don't know but I like making beats I like talking to people I like making people laugh I like this I want to explore this whole freestyle thing as my superpower that's been you know coming up so because I really feel like I could freestyle y'all all right I be in here oh maybe I should try no I don't know because it just comes you know it's a superpower I haven't I haven't figured that part out yet. You know, it's like, <laughs> all right, I gotta find the meme. But the meme where, <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, the meme where the, um, <laughs> the boy is talking about some <laughs> levitated my mama with my, uh, my vision whatever laser vision and i can't get her down <laughs> and uh, that's what i would be like so i gotta figure it out first okay like i'd be like uh i think it's like i can't turn it on like he can't get her down, I can't turn her on. It just come, it just come, it just come. Okay. Whew, that was, I be cracking myself up. Okay. Okay. Whew. Um. No, it's really not coming, it's not gonna come. I wanted to, I wanted, oh. I made a, it was like, can I, ay, yeah, ay, yeah, ay, can Ah, 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 
All right.